Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today I'll be doing a review of the Skyline Innovations Raptor 210. And now this is a new frame from a new company. Um, it's their first product they released from Skyline. Um, I'll leave a link down below to their website. Um, but it's pretty professional and it looks really nice. And when Feng um, contacted me about this frame and I checked it over, it had pretty much everything I was looking for in a frame right now. So sure, I'll take a look at it. So it comes in this really nice small box. You can see very professional packaging and it came in a well-protected box with bubble wrap. See, they've got even little smiley face stickers down here. So we open this guy up and we can see all the goodies inside. They provide a little um, kind of like a parts manual. Everything that's included here except for the PDB is not shown, but it is included. And then a little simple assembly diagram to help with that. That's really nice, printed in color there. So they offer a uh, purple and a red version. I've got the red version kit. You can see it's all red anodized um, aluminum hardware. Um, you can see the standoffs are all knurled. You can see that little um, grit pattern, which is really nice. And I'll talk more about these in a little bit. We've got as well as red screws there. So everything's all red to match or purple. That's the only two colors they offer right now. We get two battery straps, Skyline branded with Pro Racing on the back there. And then here's our frame parts. Get some uh, landing feet, which is really nice to not have, they come with it, you don't have to buy them. And you also get some antenna tube holders. Um, and these are the standard ones that come in red. And then this is a new one he told me about that they've been working on that is pretty much an indestructible version. So that's really nice there. Got some uh, more camera assembly plates. We'll get into this in a couple minutes here, a couple seconds. And then we've got these. And if you notice, these have these press fit nuts into here that are already installed. So pretty much all this stuff, it does not, it screws into that and it'll tighten down with only one screw. You don't need to hold a knot on the other side which is really nice. Here we have the VTX mounting plates and the top plate here. And a little battery sticky pad, piece of sort of like a rubber, which is really nice because I find myself having to hot glue foam onto the top plates, but something like this will be cleaner look and it's really nice that's included. As well as, you do get one spare arm. The um, This is the Raptor 210. The 210R version is the same as this, except it has a three millimeter main plate, um, all single plate. This is the 210 version, which has four millimeter separate arms. And I chose this because I'll be running this as a freestyle quad, and I liked the idea of separate arms with four millimeter that are skinnier for lower air resistance there. And the bottom of this box and its own separate piece of bubble wrap. Right here, we get the quad, the main plate. See, very nice, very professional packaging here. So you can see the arms already installed from the factory here. You can see once again, spare arm. And these just go in with these screws here with the, once again, the press fit nuts into there so you don't have to hold a washer to undo them, which is awesome. And there's a little brace plate on the bottom. So these two plates here, this bottom plate as well as this brace plate are two millimeters thick. And the arms on this are four millimeter. And just right away, looking at the carbon, I don't see any single flaw in the cuts, any burring, any scratches. I think it looks super, super clean. I don't see any flaws here. Yeah, and trying to flex this by hand, that is really stiff. That's probably the stiffest carbon that I've ever felt in this, even though they're skinnier. I don't know if this is a different type of carbon, probably a higher grade maybe, but wow, that's really nice. Let's see? Yeah, I can't see any flaws on this, so that's really nice. So let me get the rest of these parts um, unbagged here, and then we'll start building up this frame, and I'll talk more about it. All right, and there we go. Everything's all unpackaged. You can see I've got it sort of sorted out and spread out here. So I'm going to start uh, building this up, and I'll be referencing this uh, manual sheet to make sure I get everything right. But just real quick, I wanted to mention, I said I'd talk more about these standoffs. Um, these are 30 millimeter standoffs, I believe. The normal ones you see in most quads are 30 or 35. However, this um, frame gives you the option to use these as well. They're both included, which is really nice. You don't have to pick, so if you want to switch, you can. Um, but these are 20 millimeters, so that will, um, instead of having your bottom plate here and your top plate here, you're going to be basically squashing it down to about that thick. So your battery can ride, because um, this is a top mounted battery frame, your battery can ride a lot lower, closer to the prop line, which is better for CG and better flying. A couple other frames like the Armat and um, Chameleon are doing that. So it's a really nice option and one of the main features of this quad. 
Okay, so starting on the bottom plate here, to get these standoffs in, I'll be using the 20 millimeter versions. Um, you take one of those and the eight millimeter screws, which is the shorter screws. There's eight mil and 10 mil. And you just go up through there. And since these are knurled, you can get a decent grip on them with just your fingers, so I won't need to be using a screw or um, Allen wrench to tighten these down here. Okay, there we go, all the standoffs are in place. So next I'm gonna do the camera mount, which consists of these plates here, and this one, and then these plates are for the GoPro session up top. Okay, so here the camera mount assembly is finished. And it was a little bit more complicated than I expected to assemble. So let me just quickly go over um, how you do it. So there's these two inner uh, longer brackets. I believe they're three millimeters thick. They're kind of a curving piece. And then there's this thinner outer plate. It's uh, one millimeter thick that goes along there. So you just put those next to each other. And then use the 10 millimeter bolts and do a 20 millimeter standoff here. And up top, there's this little piece you can see here, and it has these little slots that the GoPro plates um, go onto. And if you're not using a GoPro session or another action camera, you don't need to put these on. But it's nice to have a little HD mount there. And these just slot on, and then these screws, 10 millimeters, go through these little press fit nuts and tighten down there. And then in the back, this standoff is the 20, there's one 25 millimeter included that goes through there because it doesn't have the extra thickness of these and you just screw that in and once it's all together it's really solid and nothing can move so that's really nice uh, and then just these will um, slot into the front of the frame right here those just slot in right there and then the uh, camera top the top of this will bolt down into these later once we add the top plate so next top plate here. I'm not going to install the PDB or anything, but I forgot to mention it does come with full nylon hardware. You can see it's got a bunch of bolts and nuts in here to mount your PDB and flight controller, as you can see in the diagram. So the back plate, it's just going to sit on here like this. And we'll get these plates, which will be for our video transmitter. And this taller, this longer one is for the taller standoffs and the shorter one for the shorter. And I don't believe... I mean, it, it's meant for a bulkhead video transmitter. If I show you this one I got here, this is the FX795T because I put a bulkhead SMA on it. So it just fits through there basically and then you tighten down a washer and it sticks out the back so it doesn't put stress on it. It stresses the plate, not the video transmitter. So I'm wondering which side I would want up because the big holes are like that. So yeah, I'd want the the holes to be towards the bottom so there's more room for that so that just sits on there we should be good to slot that into the plate like that and then also for the back plate uh, I'm gonna add this is the little antenna tube holder and it comes with these little guys which I'm gonna stick in here these little antenna tubes and you cut these to length depending on your receiver antennas and these black ones are the flexible and destructible ones and this just sits does it have cutouts no okay so it just sits on like that and okay and then the rest of these top screws i'm going to use the eight millimeter ones that are included and there is plenty, plenty of threads to go down into these standoffs, so they are not going to break loose on you in a hard crash. There's tons of threads. Let me just show you. The amount of threads going into these are crazy. Which is a really nice sign because it's it's just disappointing when they include screws that only go maybe two millimeters into it, and then in a hard crash, they're gone. So for these front two standoffs, we're not going to be using the screws going to be a little bit different because of this camera mounting so you open up this package that has these two standoffs with the open threaded end on them and then this they screw down into the other standoffs and tighten down the front of the plate like that now let's pop the camera plate in to its slots. Okay, 
okay. Pop that in. You can see that lines right up with the top of this. All right, so lastly, we're just gonna add this little um, adhesive battery strap, or a little adhesive rubber thing to add to the top so it can um, stick. The battery can have a nice sticky surface so it grips it well. And go slow when ripping this off. And I'm just going to set it in the middle right there. And just press it down and there is no way this is going to come off once you get it pressed in real nice there. And that should, um, you know, it grips my fingers really well. Imagine how it grips the batteries. That's really nice. It blends in with the black there. So there we go. That was the build of the Raptor 210. So now let's uh, dive into it more. All right, so first let's take a closer look at the camera mount. Um, I didn't really like how it was a little bit complicated to assemble. However, once you have it together, you don't really need to take it apart again, and then these will be your your holes for your camera to sit the screws to go in, because once you uh, remove these two screws, this whole part can just lift off. So that's great, because if you need to um, change your camera settings really quick in the field, it's only two screws to get in there, and then you can access the little port from the back there. Okay, and just to highlight, once again, the lower top deck, you can see just how much lower, instead of being up here, it's all the way dropped down, which is really nice, because that'll get your battery to a really low, a lot lower CG, a lot closer to the prop line, because if your motor's here, the props are going to be just about there, so that should make it a really nice feeling quad. So let's get some measurements here, zoom out just a little bit, and I'll measure arm to motor to motor comes out to what it looks like about 209 so pretty close there and let's see front to back is 135 and side to side is 160 so it is a little bit of a squashed X frame which I definitely like for freestyle um, stretch decks for racing squash decks for freestyle is how I like to fly so I know you're all asking so let's get a quick weight measurement on this guy Probably hoping it'll come in around 110 grams. Not sure. Let's see what we get. 123 and a half. Okay, so 123. So it's not. It's kind of heavy, but it's not that heavy. The uh, my Mini Quad Club Fusion was, I believe, 135. But this also includes the um, session mount, the battery um, strap or the battery pad here, and the antenna tubes, which is probably another uh, 20 grams or so. And so it's about 110 gram frame bare, um, but the the session mount, let's talk about that. So I have my session here, the plates, you can see are quite narrow actually, not even nearly as wide as the session, and the session just uh, sits on this. You could use a little uh, case, 3D printing case if you wanted, just to give it a little extra protection. That The one thing I didn't like about this is, if you look just how high it is, I wish it could have been brought down more above the camera here. However, this way it'll stay well out of view of your camera, but it will add a little more top heavy CG. So hopefully the um, lower battery will help balance that out, but I wish it was just a little bit lower, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem there. So again, for the video transmitter in the back, it just comes through this plate here, the bulkhead connector, you can see. You'll just put it through, obviously, the other way around, and then you'll screw the little nut that comes with the SMA connectors down, and your antenna will just mount straight out the back there, so that's really nice. And you can put your receiver on top of the uh, video transmitter there. You can make just like sit that down, then tape this to the top of that, and then your antennas can go straight up through these little cutouts into the antenna tubes and then you can cut them to length so they won't be nearly this long they'll only be about half that length so that's really nice integration there okay so let's just do a quick recap here so I definitely like this frame it comes in at $80 on pre-order right now and the fit and finish and carbon and the cuts and everything about this frame and even the design I think is definitely worth $80 it's a little more expensive than some of your you know $50 cheaper frames but it's definitely not quite as expensive as say something like an alien which is 120 and I definitely think this frame is worth the money it's very high quality as far as I can tell so far and just another quick note it also does come with a simple Maytech PDB um, but for some reason mine since it was shipped out early did not receive that but the st standard ones will 
Um, I definitely do like the camera mount being able to change with only two screws. You can lift that up and change your uh, FPV camera settings. And I definitely like how the lower deck is slammed down. You can fit your PDB and uh, flight controller in there. However, I will be using a flight controller and all-in-one ESC, 4-in-1, which is the X-Racer Quadrant. I'll be testing these out, as well as the Furious FPV Radiance. So these two should fit right in there. And as well as for the motors on this guy, I will be using the Hyperlight from Pyroflip RC, the V4 2206-2522KV um, Team Edition motors, and I'm using some DAL Cyclone V1 or 2. These are V1, but I have V2 on the way. And this will be a blue-themed build. I have blue, extra blue um, standoffs here and hardware to swap out. And for the receiver, just an XSR. But yeah, I really like the frame. I love how it comes with two battery straps. So if you rip one, you have another. And these are high quality ones, They're just like the Lumineer ones I have. Um, they have a nice rubbery surface to grip the battery as well as this plate. So you should only need one there. And there's two um, cutouts there for the battery strap to go through. As well as it comes with these little mounts, which are nice because I always add these anyways to get uh, landing pads on the arms instead of landing on these screws that are the farthest down there. And also the uh, press fit nuts in here. I also quite like those. Even though it comes pre-assembled for um, maintenance, you don't need to get in here with a um, hex or a hex wrench or pliers and hold the nut and untwist the other end. These grip themselves, so you only need one tool to do it, which is really convenient to swap an arm. As well as it comes with a spare arm. That's really nice because half the time you only break one arm at a time. So this will get you up in the air, and they should have replacements. I'm not sure if they have them listed yet. And I had an extra 20 millimeter standoff and two of the 8 millimeter bolts left. So that's nice. You get a couple spares, as well as the 35 millimeter or 30 millimeter ones. So yeah, that was my initial bench review of the Skyline Innovations Raptor 210. Really liking the looks of this frame, and this will be probably my next main freestyle quad. And yeah, I really like I really like the design of this guy. Stay tuned for more coming soon. I'll be doing build videos part one, two, and three of this guy, as well as a full tuning video on this. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon if you wish to um, help support the channel. That'll be down there, as well as on my Patreon, I, le I release um, some extra short um, FPV videos that I did not release on my channel if I don't think they're good enough or just for a little extra bonus. So if you want to get in on those, you can help support the channel there. Please subscribe if you want already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.